All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. I am your host, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina, Sammy Fryer. And today I want to talk about a subject that is a uh, global topic of discussion. This is not a politically charged or biased video. This is just something that I want to point out to South Carolinians that you may not be aware is going on. You may not have been aware of, and I would just suggest that it's probably something to keep an eye on because of the practical implications that it could potentially have or is having on your everyday life. And of course, I am talking about the lawsuit that the city of Charleston has filed against fossil fuel companies in regards to climate change and the adverse effect of severe weather patterns. So it's the Charleston climate change lawsuit. So I'm going to read y'all some of this article that was just released yesterday. The, uh, the article will be down in the description. Also down in the description, I have linked the lawsuit. So it is the city of Charleston versus Brabham oil company. And the filing date was 2020. So this has been ongoing for a while now, but you can actually follow the entire lawsuit right here. If, if you care to do so. Starting on September the 9th, 2020, where the complaint is filed, as you can see there. And it goes through. Let's just read it real quick so we know what we're talking about before we get into the actual article that we're going to read through. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm just going to skim through it. But it says, Charleston filed a lawsuit against fossil fuel companies alleging their responsibility for devastating climate change impacts. The city of Charleston filed an action in South Carolina Court of Common Pleas against fossil fuel companies asserting that they are responsible for devastating adverse climate change impacts on Charleston and its residents. The alleged impacts include uh, flooding, inundation, erosion, beach loss due to sea level rise, more frequent and longer lasting severe extreme weather events resulting in social, economic and other consequences. And so that's pretty much the gist, really. So you can kind of go on from there, but you can actually follow the lawsuit. Everything that's going on. Every status report, order, motion, brief, opposition, all of that. All right. So that link is down in the description. But this article from the Greenville News from yesterday is just what I want to read through a little bit. And it is titled How Charleston's Climate Change Lawsuit Could Harm All of South Carolina. So diving right in, they give you some background. The lawsuit was filed by now former Charleston Mayor John Tecklenburg in September of 2020, as we just saw against two dozen major oil and pipeline companies for their alleged role in contributing to climate change. Now, the article is calling this case legally dubious. So I'll let you do with that, whatever you will. But that's what they say. But they want to point out, and this is the point of the article and of this video, that it could cause also significant economic harm in South Carolina while doing nothing to address what its backers allege are the underlying impacts of climate change. This, that's the interesting point. And so there's potential for this to be counterproductive and economically harmful to the residents of South Carolina. So it says that findings from a recent PwC economic analysis indicate the oil and gas industry added more than $13.2 billion to the GDP of South Carolina in 2021 alone. It was also a major job creator in the state, employing more than 26,000 residents directly and supporting more than 83,000 jobs elsewhere in the state of South Carolina, many of which are at small businesses and totaling in more than $6.1 billion in labor income. If this litigation is successful and they're, they're asserting that it's counterproductive, I'll let you decide that. But the bottom line is, if the litigation is successful, it would not only dismantle this economic engine that was just referenced, it would also mean higher energy prices for all of South Carolina families and businesses at a time when few can afford it. With annual inflation at 3.6%, South Carolina already ranks in the top five states with the highest increase year over year in cost of living, which is crazy because, and we pointed some of this out on the channel, we're still below you know, most of the United States in terms of the affordability or cost of living in South Carolina. But it looks like we're catching up. And I can say, and they're going to go on to talk about your energy bill. Uh, let's see. Matter of fact, let's just read it right here. No doubt the steep 4.6 jump in the cost of electricity last year is a main driver of our high inflation rate. But this expense would only soar higher should inputs needed to power our homes, i.e. oil and gas, become more expensive. And so I know that we're feeling the weight of this in our light bill. And I'm pretty sure that the rest of y'all are and can confirm as well. The implication is that 
if this lawsuit were to be successful, could place stipulations and regulations on the way that we manufacture energy in the state, causing what are already increasing energy rates to just multiply by more. And I'm going to skip through some of the article um, because, like I said, this is not intended to be any type of a bias take on this. I just want to present this to you because a lot of you might not even be aware that this is going on. And so the article states that the new mayor down in Charleston sits in a position where perhaps the city will withdraw the lawsuit. And the article goes on to talk about investing in cleaner energy solutions as opposed to litigation and regulations against energy companies that exist, that are providing energy in an effort to protect cost. And so again, this has been ongoing in court uh, for a while now. And like I said, the link to the case is down in the description so you can follow along with it, see where it's at now. The most recent thing I think was there was a motion by the defense to dismiss the case for lack of a, a specific stated claim. And if I'm correct, uh, at the beginning of the year, the city of Charleston filed to um, oppose that request for dismissal. So this thing's still tied up in litigation and ongoing Seems like there's potential for the city itself to now drop the case. I'm not really sure. What I'm saying is that this is something to keep an eye on. Obviously, all of you guys have your eyes on your light bill, and it's already higher than you're used to it being. And because of this very subject, there is potential for it to be even higher. Maybe some of you out there are attorneys. Maybe you are just privy to this case and you know more information than I do. Maybe you have something that you could share with us of value to give some insight into this case, regardless of what position you take on it. Again, this is an objective video. I don't have a position or side on this that I'm taking in this video. I'm just sharing the information with you so that you guys knew it was a thing because it is a thing. And if you would like to educate us on this subject a little bit or share your opinion, feel free to leave a comment down in the description. I keep my South Carolina hat on and we are going to go hard for the cause of South Carolina, no matter what our light bills look like. In fact, if our light bills are higher, we may go even harder because we're going to need to be able to pay them. With that said, I wish y'all all the best out there in the great state of South Carolina and y'all take care and we'll see you on the next one.